was their youngest volunteer at the age of 12. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you so much, Phil. And uh, thank you to all of you uh, for being here this, evening, uh, this afternoon. It's, uh, it's really wonderful to see so many old friends, people that I haven't seen literally for, for many, many years. And uh, to, to share in the journey many of you have shared with me uh, over the past a few decades. It's, it's just quite incredible to be here. Um, wonderful to be back at, uh, at Frontier College. I was telling Phil that when I saw Jack's, Jake's yeah. Street, um, I remember having come to Jake's Street, but as I came to this building, I thought that wasn't the building. And he told me that in fact it was 31, which was torn down. But uh, yeah, I was a kid, 18 years old, um, just uh, had just quit at UBC. It was uh, just after the War Measures Act. Uh, and I was feeling a lot of turmoil about what I was going to do with my life, and uh, so I went uh, and I joined Frontier College, and it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. As uh, that little excerpt from uh, from the book that Graham uh, read uh, uh, shared, it, uh, I, somebody reminded me that the room next door is called the Robinson Room, um, not in honor of me. <laughs> I regretfully said, um, but, but actually, the principal, by coincidence, the principal of Frontier College when I was there was Eric Robinson, who was also a great leader for many, many years in Frontier. So thank you, Phil, so much. It's just wonderful to be back in my old stomping grounds. I remember staying at the y YMCA, a few stories there that I'm not going to share. Uh, uh, and uh, on College Street, is that uh, YMCA and College Street, and meeting at a place called Franz, which is about the yeah. yeah. still around. Yeah. <laughs> that was 41 years ago, but uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's so great to be back. Um, I. Um, I also just, Stephen, it's so good that you could be here and, and to, to, to be able, as I said to, in my message to Stephen, I was feeling incredibly greedy because he, he came to the, uh, the launch in, in Vancouver as well and was just, as usual, eloquent, passionate and, and incredibly, I mean, it just means so much uh, for him to, to be sharing this experience, someone that has been a hero of mine for so many years and, and who, by the way, Stephen, it was responsible for me doing the work that I'm doing now with the Global Fund. Stephen, I don't think I've, if I've shared the story, but it was in 2008 at the AIDS conference in Mexico that Stephen actually said to me, we were talking about stuff, uh, there we were both there, and he said, why aren't you doing this work? Uh, he said, stay a million miles away from UN AIDS and WHO, uh, <laughs> but there's something called the Global Fund. Um, introduced me to Michelle Kazichkin, who was then the, the head, uh, and for the last five years I've had the great privilege uh, and honor of being able to work with the Global Fund to fight AIDS, TB, and malaria. And one of the greatest privileges to be able to share some of those struggles. I mean, the work that Stephen does, uh, you have no idea the kind of respect and love that it engenders around the world. I mean, I, I was asked to bring greetings to Stephen uh, from Tabata Kumalo, uh, a, a wonderful, Stephen knows, a wonderful uh, Zimbabwe member of parliament. Um, whom Stephen worked with, uh, victim of the most brutal and violent uh, rape and sexual assault, um, who stood up with great courage against the powers there um, and is a member of parliament in, in Zimbabwe now. And, and the work that Stephen has been doing on gender equality issues, uh, uh, fighting homophobia uh, around the world is, is, is really inspiring. And to be able to share some of that as my day job, you can just imagine how wonderful that is. So thank you, Stephen, for your leadership. It's, it's amazing. Um, others have, have recognized folks around the room, and of course the worst thing that a politician, either a recovering politician like me or a, a current politician, can do is, is to try to single people out. I mean, Linda, it's, it's so great to see you here, and uh, of course I'm, I'm now in my position at the Global Fund, studiously nonpartisan, but good luck next time. <laughs> uh, and I uh, just... Uh, Again, as I look around the room and the people that I see who are part of my story and my journey, who made that journey possible, that, that Graham has documented so so eloquently. I mean, I, Aidan uh, Johnson, uh, who is here uh, in the front row, um, wrote a letter to me, 15 years old, I think, um, after having picked up a copy of Maclean's magazine in a barber shop, um, which said, Gay and Proud, a Canada's gay MP. Um, and he wrote to me about how for a guy that was struggling with his sexuality at the age of 15, how that had made a difference for him. Um, and Graham talked about some of the hate mail I got, and there's literally boxes of it. Um, but Aiden, you know, I, one letter like that just made all the difference in the world. 
and dissolved all of those other letters. So, you know, to see you here today and the leadership that you're, you're showing now, uh, it, it's just, it's wonderful. Um, uh, Judy, you know, Judy Revick, again, I mean, how many, how many journeys have we, how many paths have we shared together and over the course of the last few decades on, on so many different issues, whether it was with Henry on, on abortion, the Supreme Court that day in January of 1988 when the decision came down, or on Palestine, uh, and your courage in speaking out there, us standing on a table outside Concordia <laughs> University when, when the university had taken out an injunction to bar Libby Davies and myself and, and, and Judy from speaking. Imagine, the university <laughs> when going to court, got an injunction. Uh, and and I don't know, on Palestine, John, you know, just amazing work that you're doing as well as an artist and as, as a theater. So, um, and uh, I mean, the NPI, we could go on all day about some of the <laughs> scars that we've got from all of that. But just it's it's just so so wonderful to see um, old friends that are uh, that are here. Some of my I'm not sure if Jen Laidley was able to make it or not, um, but I just wanted to acknowledge my staff as well because. All of you that have been in public life know that you can't do the work that you do without incredibly dedicated staff. And I was so blessed over the years with wonderful, wonderful staff, uh, including, by the way, my former assistant, Phil Sixe, who worked with me for 18 years and went on and took over in very, very painful circumstances uh, and served with great distinction uh, for six years as a, as a member of parliament, for seven years as a member of parliament in Burnaby. So I just want to acknowledge the work and the role of my, my staff uh, as well. And I, I see my, my former colleague in, um, at UBC, Stefan, who is here. We were actually involved in student politics together at UBC back a few years ago now. Uh, a few. That's where, that's where I got started. I, I said many oh, times hi. that... Hi, <laughs> I said many <laughs> times that people said, well, where did you learn politics? I said the most vicious the most destructive, nasty politics that I ever, ever participated in was academic. <laughs> Which brings me to Bill Gray. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bill got started in academic politics. <laughs> And, and afterwards, everything else is a piece of cake. I mean, former foreign minister, former, former defense minister, uh, you know, chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee for several years. I was joking. I gave him more than a few of those gray hairs uh, during that time. But then yeah, he everybody out. else knows the comments. <laughs> there were a few others that shared that particular anatomical peculiarity. Um, but Bill, great, great that you could be here, and, and thank you for your leadership as well. It was, uh, it was great tormenting in the house from back. <laughs> so you know, I just. Um, I really want to just thank all of you for, for being here. It's just a, it's quite amazing. Um, it's um, most importantly, of course, I want to thank Graham, um, who and, and I, but after Stephen, I mean, you know, it's kind of hard <laughs> to, to, to find the words uh, more eloquent than, than, than Stephen's because it, it's it's true. I mean, Graham approached me about what three years ago um, and said he thought that a book should be written. Um, and he was surprised that a book hadn't been written. And I told him that, you know, I'd been approached by other publishers and they wanted me to write the thing, and, but it's a lot of work doing the book. And I certainly never got around to it. And, and what he did, which is quite extraordinary, is he took a year off from work at the House of Commons, unpaid leave from the House of Commons, to do this work, to write this book. Um, and, um, you know, did interviews. I gave him all my papers. and archives and everything else. I wasn't the easiest person to interview either. Uh, I mean, I, I, I remember well some of the interviews. There was a picture with, with me and Max and the dogs. I mean, I'd be greeting the dogs while I was answering his questions. <laughs> he, flew to, he flew to Geneva. He came out to Galliano Island and just worked incredibly hard. And I knew this book was going to be a great book when I, I, I got the feedback from people that he had interviewed who said, look, who is this guy? You know, I mean, he's quite remarkably, got me to say things that I never, ever would have said. <laughs> I'm still not sure how you do that. <laughs> Including me, by the way. <laughs> I look at someone and I say, did I say that? <laughs> I guess I did. I mean, he was very clever. He kept the tape recording. I'm not challenged Here is what you said. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> uh, of course, he had the support of his family, and Janine's so great to, to see you here as well. Uh, a great publisher as well, New Star Books, um, who I'm so pleased has published the book, and great to see Glad Day here uh, as well. Thank you so much. Um, not just for being here, but of course Glad Day is an institution in the 
gay, lesbian, bisexual, and trans community that's been just a, a pillar for, for so long. So uh, we fought a few battles alongside one another, the Right to Privacy Committee. Uh, I remember the bathhouse raids in 81 coming and speaking uh, at uh, the, the market down there. And Margaret Atwood had the best line of all. That she, you know, she, she's so wonderful. She's so droll, right? A couple thousand people there. Jack Layton was there as well. And uh, I had been ordered, of course, by Ed Broadbent not to speak because Michael Kasky said there was an election coming up and this could damage us. Well, I said, I'm going. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, Margaret Atwood, yeah, these were the bathhouse raids, right? Margaret Atwood looked out at the crowd and she's with that very droll voice. She said, what have the Toronto police got against cleanliness anyway? <laughs> So, so bravo, Graham. I mean, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, we've become friends, uh, and I value that uh, deeply. And I, I just, I, I can't, words can't express how much it means to me that you've taken on this project, and I'm just so pleased that it's been so well received as well. Finally, um, I just want to say a couple of, of words of acknowledgement, really, to, to, to two folks that, um, that couldn't be here, that uh, have been a part of my life for, for so long. Um, and that I couldn't have gotten by with, without. Uh, the love and support of my, my dear friend, my rock, my member of parliament, Libby Davies, um, who has uh, stood by me, and we've been dear friends for a long, long time. Um, uh, and I'm so glad that her partner, Kim, is here as well. Uh, Libby couldn't make it, but Kim is, is here. Uh, and I just, I want to acknowledge that, because um, I mean, Libby was there every step of the way, back to the days that she was a city councillor, she brought me soup after my accident, uh, you know, when I went over the cliff at Galliano Island and, and drove me. She shot, I was absolutely mad because I insisted she drive me to committee meetings while I still had, you know, my, my leg in a cast and, <laughs> in a wheelchair. She was right, of course. Um, uh, but Libby has just been wonderful. She, she sat there beside me after the ring and uh, provided that kind of support, which was just extraordinary. And I value that friendship deeply, and I, I wanted to acknowledge that, of course. And, and, and last but not least, uh, my partner in, in life, my partner in love, uh, Max. Um, it's been uh, almost 20 years, uh, and those are 20 gay years, so it's... Uh, <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> it's um, I mean, again, uh, Max was actually able to join us at the launch in Vancouver and, uh, and in Ottawa, and I was just so, so pleased with that. Um, uh, I wouldn't be here without him. I have no doubt about that. Um, that the support that he's given to me um, uh, has just been amazing. And I'm not the easiest person to live with, I can assure you. Um, and we've been through a lot. But uh, one of the things that kept us going is um, a mantra that uh, my good friend, Clay Ruby, uh, shared. He said to, to Max, uh, he said, look, you know, if he's getting a little bit wild and a bit out of control, he said, just repeat this mantra to him. Manic, manic, manic. <laughs> uh, and so if things get a little wild, <laughs> I hear Max gently saying, Papito, manic, manic, manic. <laughs> and usually it works, not always. <laughs> usually it works. But seriously, uh, it, uh, it's just, you know, um, I couldn't have, couldn't have done it without him. Um, Max also had the best line in the book, by the way. Uh, he was asked by Graham, uh, towards the end of the interview, um, so what, what's Sven going to do when he retires? Uh, and, uh, and, and Max sort of said, well, first of all, I can't imagine Sven retiring, right? But, but he said, if he did, well, I think he'd want to be a part-time telephone operator with TELUS. Uh, <laughs> because he loves being on the phone. <laughs> what, what Graham doesn't know, actually, is, this is a true story, one of the many part-time jobs that I had was I worked as an all-night desk clerk at a place called the Silvio Hotel in Vancouver. Yeah. Some of you might know the silly, wonderful little yeah. hotel in Vancouver. Um, and it was back in the days when they had the, the uh, it's like the telephone operator with the little switches like that. Remember Lily Tallman? Yeah. <laughs> Party to <a> <laughs> Anyway, that was me. So telephone operator is definitely a possibility in the, uh, in the world. Um, I, uh, again, I want to just thank all of you for, for being here um, and to, uh, to leave you with the words that I so often uh, like to leave folks with uh, when I had the privilege of speaking uh, on public occasions, and that's the words of Margaret Mead. Uh, who said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, 
It's the only thing that ever has. Mm -hmm. You have helped me along this journey to change our world, and I will be forever grateful to you and, of course, to Graham for helping to document that. Thank you. Yes.